Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we just got some data come in uh, just momentarily, Italian consumer prices. Um, and also um, market flash PMI, which came in at 45.9. They were looking for 47.3, uh, down a little bit lower. Um, Euro a little bit under pressure here. Uh, still above 111, though. Okay, just some comments coming over about the German economy being uh, stalling. And I don't know if that was out of the German ministry. But anyway, um, so today we did have flash PMIs this morning. Uh, French PMI came in at 50.3. They were expecting 51.5. It was a little bit lower uh, than previous. Uh, Maybe explain why look these, you know, we're seeing the year a little bit under pressure. Um, looking here, I did see where um, uh, DK Trade in the chat room said they're looking like a, it looks like a one hour head and shoulders on the euro. And I'm actually looking at the euro here on a two hour, and I'm seeing the same thing head and shoulders on a two hour chart here. It does look, uh, uh, look at, uh, let's make a notation here. Bear with me. Yeah, so we're seeing this here on the on the two hour, and uh, DK Trader was saying that he saw that on a one hour. And uh, generally, I don't look at one hour charts; like at half hour, and then a two hour. Uh, but yeah, I'm seeing the same thing here, and. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. And so then when he came into um, German uh, German numbers, and you can see here once again, a bit of an underperformance here. They're looking for 44.5, came in at 43.4. And once again, surprise was to the downside. So we're starting the day off. Or should I say starting the week off with weaker numbers. Um, bear with me. And then we come into the uh, Eurozone uh, PMIs and um, also a bit here on the weak side also. Look at that. Now, as we roll here into the States, um, we do have New York Fed manufacturing at 8.30 Eastern along with Canadian uh, data. And then at uh, 9.45 Eastern, we do have market flash PMI coming in here in the States. Let's see as we go uh, roll into the next day, uh, Aussie Westpac consumer uh, survey. Now that as we roll into the next day, or for those of, in, though, for those of us in the States would be this evening, um, as well as... Uh, um, New Zealand Business Outlook. 
And then tomorrow we'll have UK um, economic data, I mean, employment data. Tomorrow will also be uh, New Zealand dairy prices. Industrial output and production and jolts, job jolts. Um, so this over this next 36 hours, not too much. Uh, mm, they're saying on the wires, 11 month of, of contraction here on the um, Eurozone PMI data. So, um, for a moment. Go back here. Move this out of the way. So uh, we are seeing the, the dollar uh, a bit stronger here. I mean, we did get above 97, but, um, and we did recover on Friday, but uh, I'm a bit surprised we didn't even push even further, although we were rather oversold. I'll give it that. Cable has given a little bit further of its gains back after a little bit of a rebound here. And let's see here. Let me change these over. Dalian still keeping the steady here. We did go in and close right on the pivot. Uh, looks like we took a dip and now we're kind of rebounding here again. Uh, Pace will remains. We, but we did go in and find some support down here. And in the analysis, we were looking for this thing to hold for some short covering. Dalakad continues to remain weak. Uh, we're looking for that move down to 31.36 and we're, we're just about there right now. Um, Tell you what, that has me has does have me as a bit of a surprise. Is these S and P's continue to still uh, holding their own here? Oh. I did not expect that. I was thinking uh, right after the um, the announcement of the you know from China that we would have just gone and started selling off. And uh, I mean, we did get a little bit of up and down action in here, you can see here on Friday, but uh, you know, here we are still pushing up here. I'm, I'm a bit surprised, I mean, uh, when you look at this from a, here's a 30 minute or two hour chart up in here. We're just, we're under these highs, but still holding up pretty firm here on this two hour chart. Bond's relatively quiet. And Look at crude. Now there are option expirations today, uh, January option expirations. So that may in part explain uh, what, what we're seeing here in crude. There we go. I have to load up a little bit more data then. Here we go. So look at that, holding up a bit $60, but well, like I said, option expiration. So giving it a little bit of that extra bid. And gold, um, still a little bit lower here. Um, let's go move this into a two hour chart. There we go. So still holding okay despite the pullback after the announcement of the news. Let's go on and move into um, back on the FX side and then we'll get, uh, go over some news and then we'll go uh, right into the analysis.
See Australian dollar and New Zealand dollars east from four month highs on profit booking. The Aussie and New Zealand dollars retreated from around four month highs on Monday as traders took profits following sharp rallies into the recent weeks. The Aussie dollar last fetched uh, 68.78. Uh, New Zealand dollar was down at 65.94 after climbing as high as 66.36. In the Aussie, a key highlight on Monday was the government's mid year budget review in which it cut its forecast for growth in the economy and wages as part of a $33 billion downgrade to expected revenues over the next four years. The move put a question mark on the government's ability to provide aggressive fiscal stimulus to prop up the country's slowing economy. We think the pressure will remain on the government to provide more support for households as a weak consumer environment drags into 2020, said Diana Mussini. Mussina. So there's still scope for tax cuts in the May 2020 budget. Mussina expects the RBA to lower its cash rate to 25 uh, percent uh, or quarter percent by March. Uh, market attention will be next on the uh, November labor market report due Thursday, which is expected to show modest employment growth with jobless rate unchanged at 5.3 percent. Resilience of the labor market is in the face of an otherwise weak economy remains impressive, but I suspect we're on borrowed time and conditions will more clearly weaken by early mid 2020, said David Besants. <clears throat> Investors also keep an eye on trade talks between Washington and Beijing following a last minute agreement that averted additional tariffs on Chinese goods, totaling $160 billion. However, skepticism, uh, skepticism remains uh, as a date to formally sign the agreement is yet to be determined. Traders also speculate about whether the Trump administration, which is called the current deal as phase one, will begin talks to phase two and commend their fundamental differences over the key issues. Um, I saw some news over the weekend. I think it was Litz Heyer, uh, Litz Singer, or I think it was him, was the one that was commenting on the Sunday morning talk shows that this can take years. So this this thing is about as good as you can get, which once again surprises me that we're holding up so well in the S and P's. I expect the market to go down. So boy, that was a bit of a surprise there. The, to see us where we are at now. See, uh, currencies, currencies made a muted response to the U.S. China trade deal on Monday as last week's brief relief in an agreement that reached was replaced by frustration and the lack of details and reluctance to make big bets as Christmas draws near. Washington, Beijing cooled their trade uh, war last week, reducing some U.S. tariffs in exchange for what U.S. officials said would be a big jump in Chinese purchases of American farm products and other goods. China already said that they didn't give any details on that. So really that's a failure there. Although, uh, anyway, enough said on that. It's just, I'm, like I said, I'm a bit surprised that the market's even holding up this well. Uh, but I guess, like I said, they're just allowing the Santa Claus rally to play out. Uh, that lifted the Aussie dollar and pushed down the safe harbor, harbor yen last week before profit taking. We've been a little bit underwhelmed by the details of what we know, said Roger uh, Rodrigo Catrill. The good news is that we have some more surety in terms of the prospect of an increase in tensions. The market needed that insurance, but in terms of the rollback, they're quite minimal. The Chinese yuan traded 69, uh, 699.59 per US dollar, uh, and still stronger than symbolic seven mark, but below that four month high. Both currencies found some support from slightly stronger than expected Chinese production and consumption data. Uh, U.S. Trade Representative Lit Singer said on Sunday, the deal will nearly double U.S. exports to China over the next two years and is a totally done despite the need for transition, translation and revisions. Um, we've seen over time more reports about the differences between what the U.S. said and what China said about the agreement said uh, Takafumi Yama, uh, Yamaka, head of uh, FX income at JP Morgan. U.S. talks about the size of U.S. farm products China will buy, but China stayed mum. Elsewhere, starting to climb uh, back towards Friday's peak. Uh, around dead in about a half a percent to 33.86. Basking in the glow of a conservative election, uh, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson claimed a huge, great. Uh, Stonking, stonking, remember the word stonking, mandate. Okay, um, and we'll just touch, we finally got um, the morning bid came out. 
Um, and the only reason I was going to go over there because it did say world stock markets are pushing at all time highs as the year ends following at least uh, partial resolution to the two issues dominated investor sentiment phase one and US China trade deal is in the bag, relatively smooth Brexit withdrawal next month. Looks after last week's UK election. And uh, let's see here. And this thing you're saying about China uh, exports would be doubling. Um, but that was the key thing when it hit on is that I guess indices are hitting across the board. So um, I guess they're playing up that Santa Claus rally. And let's see, we're saying they're going to double. So I guess maybe we're going to start out Monday a little bit on the firmer side. It certainly looks that way. And then maybe we'll see what happens after that. Some investors suggested the failure to fully roll back the prior tariff increases was the reason for caution. And Chinese officials said the wording of the final text remained delicate, but the agreement went further than the tariff deferral. deferral. Many expectants and uh, Scotch fears that all deals were off until next November year's election. To add to the burst of optimism, China's industrial production and retail sales growth for November came in ahead of forecasts. The former hit a Formant high, which was good news overall. And that's about it. So with that, let's go and move into the analysis. So as a DK trader traded, noted in the chat room, um, he was looking on the hourly and indicated a potential head and shoulders. And I'm seeing that here on the two hour chart here. So rather interesting here. Um, if the, it'd be interesting if the dollar continues and the, and the euro weakens. Certainly the data this morning is certainly not positive for the euro. Uh, let's go on and move into the euro speaking of. So the euro challenge at 112 during the UK election and the expected announcement of a phase one deal Friday morning. Upon the announcement from China on the trade deal, the dollar subsequently reversed losses, garnering upside momentum, sending the euro below support of 1130. And we're actually right now just at just a hair under 1130. On a further break lower, key support comes in at 1082. Resistance is at 1150. Bears have fended the bulls, but a close below 111 is needed to establish control. So you can see where we kind of rally back a little bit, but we're holding here. And that is resistance or was, was previously resistance, which was then support, which we went through 1130, which uh, that's where we're at right now. And as DK Trader noted, we're actually forming a head and shoulders here. So let's see if this pressure continues to go and play out here. So getting back here, the real support is going to come in at 1082. So we did rally a little bit hard going towards that right shoulder. Um, there is some minor support coming in right there at 11. Uh, 10.04, I apologize, I mean to say 11.04, and then of course down here, 10.82. So, I'm gonna show them both. There we go. And resistance is 1150. Now, I can't say this is bullish. We are higher, but because we lost 1130, um, 
I have to keep it as a range for right now. Let's see here. Let's go on and move in now to the cable. And let's see. Bear with me. I'm just going over some data real quick. Apologies, just trying to get some data loaded up. So bear with me real quick. It did not roll over in here. Okay. All right, thank you very much. And uh, let's go move to the cable. So cable took out multiple levels during the UK landslide. The pair will be bought on deep corrections. The first zone of support is 3135, followed by 3206. Um, confluence with the 3146, which is a 23% back. Resistance is 3369 followed by 3424. Well, look at us. I mean, um, did make a little bit of a jump back up here above 34. Look at that. Holy smokes. Uh, so we're looking at 3369 and we come up. Um, you can see right there at 3418, a little bit of resistance here, and that's where they ran out of gas. Resistance right now is going to be this close. going to come in right there at 33.89. And support. Thirty-two twenty-seven for right now. Oh, lower just a bit here. Thirty-two oh nine. That's still a long ways off. Um, let's go move this into a thirty-minute. But I don't think that's going to make any difference. We saw that big old run up. So hold on. We'll go right there with 33.18. We had 33.07 from last week, um, from Friday. I think I'm gonna stay with that 33.07. And let's see for further lower. <laughs> We'll go with 3228. And let's go move into the Aussie dollar. Yeah, 
It's a pride. Boy, I mean, we've made this run up here up almost to 3424. Um, nice little strong bid on this um, right for the start of the week. Moving into the Aussie. So the Aussie, after two strong upside days, finished Friday with a bearish engulfing candle, closing at support level 68.74. Newfound bulls must defend 68.48 on a closing basis to retain control. Resistance will be 69.49, uh, 69.14, I meant to say. So they got to defend 68.48. They are above that right now, and you can see that with the pink line here. So it's going to be 68.48. For support with resistance at 69.14. And you can see here um, we had this bearish engulfing. Now, if you look a, lot, a little bit closer, you can say, well, it closed and actually opened right there. I mean, it been better for it was just above, but I'm saying is you can see that we clearly took out the, the entire body. It's just a it happened to close, open right at the, the same bar, but close enough. That's bearish engulfing. So we saw a little bit of follow through in here. Let's go and move into the Kiwi. So the Kiwi following a strong two, um, and I meant to say two week push, following a strong two week push to, uh, close Friday with a gravestone doji. You can see that right there. A respite is warranted. Initial support is 65.35, followed by major a level of 64.93. Okay, they're expecting manufacturing uh, PMI out of the UK at 49.3. And I don't know why, I've, that's what I was looking over that. I don't know why that data is not showing up for me. I do not know why. Um, but anyway, let's go on and um, move on here. There we go. We're pretty close to that UK data coming out. Um, getting back here once again. You can see here, uh, see here. So support's going to be 65.35, 65.35. Um, we're holding up relatively well here. <clears throat> 65.35 and uh, resistance would be 60. It's going to go back up here, which we made it up here, 66.32. So we are holding up very well here with the uh, Kiwi. So 66.32 and 65.35 on the downside. And with that, we'll move into the cat. Tell you what. Let's go and move into the cable. With this uh, UK data coming out. There we go. So we've got the guppy, the sterling versus the odd, and the cable here. Uh, we have UK data coming out uh, in another uh, 40 seconds. So let's just go on and focus in on these uh, three pair. The guppy here, sterling versus the odd, and the cable. Manufacturing data. Forty seven point four for manufacturing. Composite forty eight point five. Forty seven point four. 
49 for services, 47.4 for manufacturing. And they're looking for, IHS is looking for economy to shrink in Q4. And just posting some headlines into the chat, so bear with me. There we go. So let's go move back into the analysis. So it says IHS market says UK uh, PMIs make it more likely that the UK economy will shrink in Q4. Uh, December flash manufacturing PMI 47.4 versus 48.9. Uh, poll was for 49.3. Output index is the weakest since July of 2012. UK flash services PMI versus November's 49.3, uh, the lowest since July of 2016. I don't know why that data didn't show up on my um, calendar, but anyway, let's go on and uh, move in now to the um, Delicad. So Dollar remains in a bearish mode after Friday's unsuccessful challenge of 3205. You can see where we made that run up here, there. Um, bears are eyeing 3136. Well, it looks like we just hit 3136. With a further break to 3087, resistance remains 3205. So that's where we are right now. We're looking for a move down to 3136. Looks like we just got that. Let's go and tag that. 3136 and on the upside, 3205. We can probably adjust that now to about 3179. With that, let's go move into the dollar peso. So the dollar peso continues its slide. The pair is quite oversold. 1897 is a value area for some short covering. Support is 18, support beyond that is 1892. Resistance is 1908, followed by 1913. So we're gonna go with um put on here 1897. Now we already had 1898 on Friday, so just move that down a little. Right there. If we are oversold, that's where we're expecting a little bit of short covering and resistance at 1908. And I think we've just about tagged that area there. So we got to, looks like we did make it to about 1909 ish or 1987. Yeah, 1908.3. So that was what we're looking at. 1908. Let's go on and move in now to the um, dolly in. Okay, the Dolly Yen finished the week with a medium-legged doji right at the pivot of 927. You can see that right here. Uh, the pair is indecisive as to who has control, bulls or bears, thus finishing in the middle of the range. You know, with the, see that little medium-legged doji. Um, the pair is open to a pullback with support coming in at 887 and resistance at 964. So that's our resistance for today.
and potentially we can pull down to 887. Now, um, we're on the we're on the strong side right now, so we're going to put this actually for 908. And go back below that pivot. Um, let's go move into the cash doll index. So the dollar index staged a rebound rally, closing above 97, but remains below the trend line support. Bears remain in control as long as the index does not close above 97.68. Support is 96.81, followed by 96.50. So um, we are higher. We got back above 97, and it was a nice rebound. But that being said, I mean, we're still below this trend line support. So what we're saying is, hey, we get, to get we have to close above 97.68 to basically negate all this stuff out. Now, resistance for right now is going to come in right there. Let's go in there. Right there. Ninety seven thirty eight and support ninety six eighty one. Let's go move into the cross rates. Um, jump into that real quick. I'm really surprised that some of these, I mean, I guess, well, we had the 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 uh, phase one deal, that thing is old as Methuselah right now. Although Litzinger was saying, hey, we're going to see more value, blah, 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 uh, you know, coming up. Um, what I was going to say, what surprised me is that we're starting out strong, although we did get good Chinese data, very good Chinese data. Uh, so we're still holding up very well here. So let's go on and uh, move into this analysis. So the QEN, after a strong three-week run, finished Friday with a gravestone doji at major level 72 cents. You can clearly see that right here. Um, initial support is 71.65. Resistance is 72.37. Well, we're almost there. Oh, we're not that far away, but I'm saying this, boy, got to give it some props. We're holding up still relatively well. And as I mentioned, you know, I was talking about the indices also. I'm like, wow. Like right now, S&Ps are at 31.84. And I would have thought we'd have seen a dip and saw further movement lower on Friday. So, um, but we, we, we did get nice Chinese data. I think it's four months in a row. It's, it's improved. So I guess we're going to start out the week a bit on the firm side, at least for the start of the week. And we're seeing that when we covered the, uh, the morning bid, we're seeing that across indices across the globe. So um, on the upside, we're looking for 7237 and initial support is 7165. So 7237. Seventy-one I would have thought we would have started out, I'm saying at least even on this chart, a little bit weaker. But once again, we've got 
nice Chinese data that's given a little bit more of a firmer boost here. Let's move in now to the um, Euro Yen. Euro Yen closed Friday with a near shooting star. You can see that. That's no gravestone doji. That's a, yeah, that shooting star, the work would even be a little bit higher, but that's pretty close there. Um, so Friday, close Friday with a near shooting star after being turned away for major level 2264. You can see that right here. Let's pull this back. A little bit of perspective. See that? So UEM closed Friday with a near shooting start to being turned away from major level 2264. Initial support is 2134, but 2080 is sure to be challenged um, on a downside move. A daily close above 2208 is needed for bulls to fend off uh, fend off the bears. I don't know if they fend off the bulls. Uh, Resistance is going to come in right there. You can see it. So let's go and pull this back. This right there. 2210. That's going to be resistance. 2210. Really starting out the week firm here. And support. Well, let's go into the intraday chart for that. Considering how well we're holding up. So we're looking at 2210 for uh, resistance. Right there, before we get there, we'll kind of give it what you're going to say is 2156. We'll call it 2156. With that, let's go move into the Euro on. The Euro on successfully defended the 6095 area, but remains incapable of sustaining an upside move having closed below 61.76. Bulls need a daily close above 62.50 to wrest control from the bears. A close below 60.95 exposes a move to 60 uh, cents. So, like I said, we did, you know, we defended the 60.95. We made that push back down. You remember how we've been up and down, up and down, up and down. So last week I said, hey, look, looks like we're going to make a move to the 60.95. We actually held up. It looked like, remember, we got this bearish uh, engulfing candle. And then we kind of held here. And then we finally made it down to 60.95. We defended it by dipping again here on Friday. Came back. And, but then we, we close, you know, uh, below 61.76. Now, we're above it right now. But... We actually need a close above 62.50 to rest control. Uh, it doesn't send us to new highs, or I mean, to really to get moving, we need to get above 63. But if we can get above 62.50, it'll put the bears at a little bit of a disadvantage. But we still haven't established any kind of direct direction to say. So for right now, um, let's go move into a two hour chart so we can catch something a little bit closer in here. It's going to be right there. You can see that right there. So it's going to be simple. It's going to be 61.48 for today. And resistance is right there. 62.28. Remember, we got to get above 62.50 to really put these bears on a defense. But sick. But for right now, 62.28 is our resistance for today.
bear with me. And let's go and move on now to the Euro Kiwi. So the Euro Kiwi remains mired in a tight range near recent lows with the daily close below 68.06. Bears can send the pair down to 67 cents. And you can see that. That's certainly not far-fetched at all. Bulls need a daily close above 69, 67 to generate some short covering. But for right now, resistance you can see is clearly 69.42. Support is 68.06. And we're just mired in this tat range. So 69.42 on the upside. 68.06 on the downside. And if we get a daily close below 6806, we're going down to 67 cents. You can honk the submarine horn. If it hasn't already been honked multiple times, you can see that. Um, let's go and move into the now to the Aussie end. So the Aussie N challenge resistance level 75.65, but paired back closing 75.61. Bears will offer on moves up to 75.65, expecting a move to 74.54, followed by 74.25. So resistance pretty clear as a bell comes in right there. 75.62. And uh, support, we'll go on into the two hour. Right there. Well, <laughs> it's pretty clear. Let's drop that just a little. Well, if we break past that, it's going to kick off some stops. So it's going to be right there. 75. Next is 75 even. Seventy five sixty two. Yeah, seventy five sixty two. Let's go move into the guppy. So the guppy finished the week retaining a strong move, a daily close above resistance of 46.34 will extend the move. Buyers will be picking up the pair at 45.03 followed by 44.08. Uh, so we said 46.34 and that's gonna be resistance right there. 46.34. And this pair is holding up very well. Um, let's take a look at the 2R for a little bit closer look for support for today.
Uh, it's shown here at 4565. You almost feel like that wants to break down a little bit lower. That is support for right now, 45. Mm. Sure feels like that thing would break a little bit lower. I can't say I've seen anything that's we'll go with these recent lows, which is gonna be forty five forty eight. And then beyond that. 45. Moving on to starting on. Mm. Well, look at that. We're facing uh, potentially a tweezer top. So starting now closed uh, on a very strong performance. Resistance is 94.28. Holy smokes, man. We got above 95 cents again today. Holy smokes. And we're off quite a bit. Well, we're off 125 pips from that. Resistance is 94.28 to 161% with a close above and we're below that 94.28. Uh, we did check it. We did tick off the 95 cents. So let's put 94.28 as our resistance for right now. Bids will form at 93.22, followed by 92.58. Let's take a look at um, intraday. Doggone, that's impressive. Holy smokes, even they even took out to new highs. Holy smokes. For right now, support is 93.75. Followed by ninety two six ninety two ninety two sixty eight. And there we go. Let's go on and take a look at some of the other markets. And like I said, I did not expect S&Ps to be here today, but we did get good China news. Uh, so we're going to start out the week apparently a bit on the firmer side. Um, so that is a bit surprising here. Bonds relatively quiet. Um, And um, 
Let's take a look at the gold market. Gold market still, despite this sell-off, we had a pretty good sell-off. We came into this support area of 1468, and we've come off of that a decent amount. We're up about $13 off of those lows, really a little bit higher than that. If you look down here, 66, we're here really up 15 plus dollars off those lows on Friday. Um, A little bit of resistance coming in here, right across here. We're still holding above it. Crude oil is above $60, but it's January options expiration today. So that's probably why, obviously, we'll probably see a change of tune um, afterwards. We, we shall see. We shall see. But uh, just something to go on and uh, be wary of. And that's about it. That's it. That's all we have. Uh, so thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar. And we'll catch you in the chat room and later today on the FX Daily Roundup.